ಸುಹೃತಿ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸೈಡೆಡ್ ಈ ದಿ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಗೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಂಪತಿ ಆರ್ ಪಿಟಿ ಆರ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬಟ್ ಮಿತ್ರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇ ವಿಲ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಮ್ಯೂಚುವಲ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಶಿಪ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ನೀಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ನೀಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದಿ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮ್ಯೂಚುವಲ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದಿ ಸುಹೃತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಮಿತ್ರ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಅರಿ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎನಮಿ ಎನಿಮಿ ಸುಹೃನ್ ಮಿತ್ರ ಅರಿ ಉದಾಸೀನ ಈಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಬಿಹೇವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವೇ ಉದಾಸೀನ ದೇಶ ಉದಾಸೀನ ಮಧ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಲ್ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಫಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದಿ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಲ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಇದರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫಿಶ್ ಆರ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ನೆವರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಫಿಯರ್ ಮಧ್ಯಕ್ಷ ದ್ವೇಷ ಬಂಧುಷು ಸಮ್ ಇ ವಿಲ್ Uh, even for the haters one who hates he for the uh, yogi even he, if anybody hates the yogi he will never bother about bandhusho even for relatives so the suhrut friends indifferent and the neutrals even the um, uh, bandhusho relations and the sadhusho ko cha paap ebhya ಸಮಬುದ್ಧಿ ವಿಶೇಷತೆ ಈವನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಜಾನಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಎ ಯೋಗಿ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಸಿ ಎ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಆರ್ ಎ ವಿಕೆಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಇ ವಿಲ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸಿ ದಿ ಡಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಆತ್ಮನ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಬಡಿ ಯೋಗಿ ಯುಂಜೀತ ಸತತಮಾತ್ಮ ರಹಸ್ಯಸ್ಥಿತ ಏಕಾಕಿರ್ ಯಪಸ್ಥಿತಾತ್ಮ ಚೆಕ್ ದ ಸರ್ವ ಪರಿಗ್ರಹ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಎಸ್ ಈ ಸತತಮ ಆತ್ಮಾನ ರಹಸ್ಯಸ್ಥಿತ ಯಾಕಾಕಿರ್ ಯಥಚಿತ್ತಾತ್ಮ ಚೆಕ್ ದ ಸರ್ವ ಪರಿಗ್ರಹ ಯೋಗಿ ಸಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಲೋನ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಸಾಲಿಟ್ರಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇಲ್ ಬಿ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯೋಗಂ ಯಾಕಾಕಿರ್ ಯಥಚಿತ್ತಾತ್ಮ ಈಸ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟೆಡ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿ ಸೆಂಟ್ರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಐಬ್ರೋಸ್ ಚಕ್ತ ಸರ್ವ ಪರಿಗ್ರಹ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಲೋನ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಔಟ್ಸೈಡ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದಿ ಪರ್ಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಫರ್ಗೆಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಲೀವ್ ಇಟ್ ಔಟ್ಸೈಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಸಿಟ್ ಎಲೋನ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಸಾಲಿಟ್ರಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟೆಡ್ ವೇ ಹೌ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ if anybody um, reads bhagavad gita he should know that why sri krishna paramatma is telling about all the steps of doing yoga uh, that uh, if uh, he sees uh, he reads uh, naturally he will be cling to know about this yoga uh, here says sucha udeshe pratisthapya sthiram asana atmanah natyuttam natinicham chala jana kusotaram the the yogi how he will sit uh, he is explaining ಸುಚ್ಚ ಉದ್ದೇಶೆ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಾಪ್ಯ ದಿ ಆಸನ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ನೀಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಸ್ಥಿರಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಟೇಬಲ್ ಸ್ಥಿರಂ ಆಸನ ಆತ್ಮನ ನಾಚುತ್ರಿತ ನಾತಿನೀಚಂ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಆಸನ ಶುಡ್ ನೆವರ್ ಬಿ ಟೂ ಹೈ ನಾರ್ ಟೂ ಲೋ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಆಸನ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಮೆಷರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಟೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೀಟ್ ಇಂಟು ಟೂ ಫೀಟ್ ಲೆಂತ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎನಫ್ but the height should be uh, not more than 3 inches so that is the uh, standard thing and the tasanam uh, should never be too high that mean if it is high too high naturally if a, a yogi uh, if at all he goes to sleep or anybody who left the uh, leaves this and go and into meditation there is every chance of uh, Uh, swaying or swinging and uh, falling forward thereby he may be losing teeth or he may be his face may be injured so that's why the asana should not be too high and it
there at the low lying area so there is every possibility of uh, uh, lurking of this uh, uh, micro organism so the asana should never be low and chala ajana kusotaram chala ajana kusotaram chala means cloth ajana means skin the kusa means the darbha that is holy grass so uttaram means one by one first you have to put the uh, darbha that is holy grass over which you have to put the skin deer skin or tiger skin and over which you have to put the white cloth chala ajana kusotaram why shri krishna paramatma is particularly particularly mentioning these three things you know a person who is doing this sadhana should first he should be away from the earth gravity that is uh, uh, he should be away from the earth gravity that means while he is sitting he between himself and the earth there should be a non conducting material a uh, non conducting material when what are they all these three are non conducting material only. but why there are three things he is mentioning here the holy grass you know it has got a very uh, capacity of attracting the uh, this magnetic energy that is going from north to south that energy magnetic energy that will be uh, received by this holy grass that's why even during the uh, eclipse whether it is sun or moon during the especially sun eclipse the grass will be the holy grass will be put in every food material that mean um, during this eclipse the energy will be coming from the uh, sun will be very less and uh, that lessness with that less energy uh, the atmosphere will be uh, spoiled and it will be destroyed uh, most of the microorganisms will take dominance so in order to destroy this thing uh, the darbha the holy grass will attract the whatever the energy magnetic energy is uh, coming from the south north that will attract that's why if you sit on the uh, holy grass uh, there will be energetic the asana itself will become energetic why he is prescribing this skin you know this skin whether it is deer skin or tiger skin that is purely uh, non conducting and not only non conducting it won't allow anything <laughs> that is of course in those days the people used to do uh, this yoga in the forest so they are prescribing they are, that was uh, that's why it was prescribed but for householders it may not be possible but uh, the purpose of putting this deer skin or uh, tiger skin is it is a perfectly non conducting material and not only that uh, over which you are uh, laying this uh, white cloth uh, whether it is uh, uh, white cloth whether it is it should not be too soft or too hard but uh, uh, four folds white cloth if you put it uh, while doing your yoga you may be sweating there will be uh, you, uh, there will be perspiration the water drops sweat water drops they will be uh, soaking the white cloth and after that uh, there will be visible every possibility to, uh, to soak the underlining uh, skin and uh, uh, darbhas but uh, when you put the skin it won't allow the water to go downwards even to the darbhas that uh, that's why the any damp atmosphere or any water uh, through sweating that will be soaked in the uh, Uh, oh, so penetrate to uh, cloth itself that can be washed periodically, but the remaining layers should be always kept intact, and it they should never be foul smelling or stinky. So, in order to avoid all these things, you have to put the white cloth, and uh, you have can uh, periodically change this. So, a constant asana must be necessary for a yogi, uh, and uh, in that way. तत्रैकाग्रम मनकृत्व यतचित्तेन्द्री क्रय उपविश्वास ने इंजा योग विशुद्धे तत्रैकाग्रम मनकृत्व यतचित्तेन्द्री क्रिय हियर ईज गोइंग आन नर्शनिंग वैल डूइंग दिस योग मन दिस आसनम एकाग्रम मनकृत्व बै कॉन्सट्रेटिंग द मैंड यतचित्तेन्द्रिय क्रिय कांक्रिंग द मैंड एंड दिसंसैस उप विश्वास ने इंजात योग विशुद्धया इन आर टू प्यूर फॉर योर मैं यू डू योग सो ईस्पेषली मेन्शनिंग अबउट दिस 
doing yoga not only the asana he is mentioning how to sit how to sit in the uh, posture he is mentioning samankai sirogrivam dharyam nachalam stiraha samprekshan nasikagam saundishascha navalokyan this is the most important shlokam one of the most important that is in the fifth chapter samam uh, sparshan krutva that shlokam that is 27th shlokam or fifth chapter and this shlokam is also very very important for a yogi uh, samankai sirogrivam dharyan achalam stiraha a yogi should keep his body uh, uh, stable by putting his trunk and the neck and the head in an erect, erect posture and perpendicularly should be he should directly uh, samankai sirogram dharyan achalam staraha without moving anything anywhere it without moving he should go on uh, looking upwards sampreksha nasikagram he and nasikagram sampreksha this is uh, very very scientific uh, procedure paramatma is telling sampreksha each means seeing preksha means uh, with seeing with intensity sampreksha means thoroughly see so how can you see thoroughly unless you do something uh, process inside simply by meditating or uh, what you call dhyanam you can never see like that you can never see direct like that but a, a person who is doing yoga sadhana that is vayu sadhana can only see directly and he will keep his uh, eyes upwards what is the purpose of uh, keeping eyes upwards you have to turn the uh, eyeballs upwards inside the only thing is the black portion of the eye that is cornea should be turned upwards inside and the only sclera white portion of the uh, eye should be seen outside why there is a deeper meaning in it say the cranial nerves the cranial nerves that mean the first olfactory that is uh, supplying to the nose and the second third fourth and sixth nerves of the brain coming from the uh, the cranial nerves all these are supplying to our eyes only our eyes only so if you turn the light eye upwards the force which is coming from the brain again it will be uh, turned inside that is another thing there is another uh, thing is uh, in mantra pushpam we say uh, nela toyeda majjasta vijjul lekheva bhasara nevara sokavat tanvi peta bhasya chanopama in mantra pushpam in maha narayana upanishad uh, it is mentioned like that nela toyeda majjasta nela toyeda means the black portion of the eye vijjul lekheva bhasara some people they will uh, translate like this uh, that is, that is a cloud in outside the in the atmosphere they say that uh, that is also called nela toyedam in that uh, that cloud there will be water vapor inside what that's why it is also called nela toyedam but here the uh, eyeball itself vijjul lekheva bhasara vijjul lekheva bhasara that means just like the um, lightning that means the spark like why uh, light will be uh, coming from the eyes this is a very very important point you know in everybody through the eyes there will be divine light coming outside as a glow if a person living means you will see glow on the iris that is a, uh, the uh, black portion of the eye cornea uh, in that cornea there is iris you know uh, through that uh, there is a black hole and through that black hole that uh, divine light uh, coming like a glow that uh, glow clearly indicates your health the a, a patient who is dying that uh, glow will be diminished a, a person who is having much sufficient prana shakti that uh, glow will be more if a yogi does yoga uh, thoroughly that glow will be uh, glowing like anything that light divine light will be coming through the eyes and that will be flowing outside if you turn it outside that if you turn it upwards and inside that glow which is going out through the eyes that will be turned inside 
you will see the your own light inside that thereby forming a circuit our gurudev used to say if you turn your life eyeballs upwards the glow coming from the brain will be again turned inside uh, to the source through the eyeballs in that way he says swayameva swayam pasyet atmarajye sukhe vaset atmanam swayam bhokshet sajivan mukturichate a jeevan mukta will be like that like this swayameva swayam pasyet he will see his own divine divine light which is passing out through the eyes so when you turn it upwards you will see the divine light inside the uh, four brain that is forehead so inside the forehead you will see the divine light well, how by seeing your own uh, light which is coming out through the eyeballs so swayameva swayam pasyet he will see his own divine light atmarajye sukhe vaset with that only he will enjoy the uh, bliss of the atman atmanandam swayam bhokshet one who enjoys that uh, uh, eternal bliss by his own self sa jeevan mukturuchade he is called jeevan mukta he is the liberated soul that's why i would say he is an enlightened soul what is meant by enlightened soul light means you know divine light light enlightened enlightened means making light crash encrash encrash can n means kare to make encrash means to make crash that like like that enlightened means to make light that means one who does yogam he will uh, convert his uh, uh, life energy into light then only he will be called as enlightened soul the exact meaning of enlightenment means he has converted his life force into divine light that is uh, uh, divine light uh, will be seen for a yogi provided if he turns his uh, balls upwards that is the meaning science behind this uh, uh, sampratan nasika agram here also nasika agram means not at the tip of the nose but uh, nasika means nose agram means agrajadu means the starting point of the nose is that is at the brumajyam so you have to see at the uh, tip of the not at uh, starting point of the nose that is at the brumajyam here also most of the pundits they have translated that uh, the nasika agram means a uh, tip of the nose when they said they, this is tip of the nose means they don't know alphabets of pranayama they don't know about the alphabets of pranayama but uh, here lord, lord sri krishna uh, means is sampratya nasika agram you have to see at the root of the nose means that is in the center of the eyebrows uh, uh, here also there is a uh, doubt some people who are uh, recently initiated uh, uh, guruji shall i uh, keep my eyeballs in a uh, conjoint way in this way that means um, uh, at the one point uh, between the eyebrows or shall i have to uh, keep my eyes upwards always keep your balls upwards only don't converge that uh, that convergence will be there automatically inside but uh, A yogi should look upwards straight away upwards on lay not in this way no so you need you need not strain to concentrate converge these eyeballs simply look upwards that's all so sampratan nasika agam saund sachan don't see the sides means when you close the eyes in there is no question of saying this thing uh, lord sri krishna by opening eyes only you don't see the side words that means so open the eyes and look upwards that is by doing pranayama only by doing pranayama only you can uh, uh, sit erect and keep your eyes upward these two things are possible only for a yogi but not for a ordinary uh, meditator so samankaya sirogriyam dharyan natilam sthirah sampratya nasika agram saundishascha navalokyan प्रशांत आत्मा विगत भी ब्रह्मचारी वृत्ते स्थित मन संयम्य मच्चित्त युक्त आसीत मत्पर प्रशांत आत्मा विगत भी वेन ही इज गेटिंग पीस ऑफ माइंड एंड विगत भी ही इज डिवाइड ऑफ ऑल दिस फियर ब्रह्मचारी वृत्ते स्थित ही विल बी अब्सर्विंग दिस सिलबसी 
here brahmacharyam celibacy is of two types that is grohastha brahmacharyam and the another is naishtika brahmacharyam the grohastha brahmacharyam is the uh, starting brahmacharyam that can be observed by the any householder even if he is got uh, is with family with his wife and children uh, if he is even if she is wife wife he can uh, be in this growth of brahmacharyam uh, only thing is if he goes on doing this pranayama especially uh, uh, during the menstrual period that is between the uh, the menstrual cycle that is between 12 and 18 days after uh, a, a, a lady gets menstruation starting with the first day of menstruation up to 12 days uh, you have to you should not uh, conjugate but again after 18 days or so you should not uh, uh, meet with your wife so only uh, days left are only 12 to 18 days provided if the lady gets a regular uh, periods for 28 days so in that period if he meets his wife or if she meets his husband uh, her husband between these 12 and 18 days that can be also called as grohastha brahmacharyam so that is also grohastha brahmacharyam but afterwards when the uh, this yogam uh, goes on increasing it reaches its maximum state that will be turned into naishtika brahmacharyam without thinking of anything in eight ways that is called uh, naishtika brahmacharyam brahmacharya vrittasthita manas samyam achitto yukta asita matparaha by controlling this mind you will uh, reach me you will be mentioned in me like that is selling telling yunjanevam sadatmanam yogi nitamanasah shantim paramam parsamastha natsamstha adigachati yunjanevam sadatmanam yogi nitamanasah shantim nirman paramanam mastam mastamstha adigachati he is selling telling that uh, the states when he is going on doing this yogam yunjanyam sadatmanam yogi nitamanasa by doing yogam by controlling this mind shantim nirvana paramam then he will get the peace of mind automatically paramam here also there are two states of peace of mind uh, ordinarily when you uh, get rid of these uh, senses and sensory objects uh, momentarily you will get the peace of mind but the peace of mind is there inside that is above the uh, brahmarandram that uh, state is telling shantim nirvana paramam mat samstham adigacha then you will reach me you will reach my state so the yogi will be uh, reaching that state but how to reach that he has already mentioned the asanam and the erect posture and now he is telling about the diet how to uh, 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 take the diet न चस्तु योगोस्त न चैकांत मनसंत न चाति स्वप्न से जागृत नैव चार्जुन ए योगी शुड अबर्व वेरी काशस्ली अबउट दि स्ली एंड दि डयट न अच्छा योगोस्ति वेदर इफ यू टेक् मोर् फुड न चैकांत मनसंत इफ यू टेक् लेस् डयट न च अति स्वप्न से इफ यू स्ली मोर् jagrato naiva charjana if you uh, uh, all the way wakeful uh, yukta ahara visa viharasya yukta chestasya karnasu yukta swapna avodhasya yogo bhavate dukha if you combine these two shlokas we can understand that uh, you have to observe very cautiously about the sleep and the diet if you take more food mind you some people you will be going on thinking that if you take more food you will get more energy never think like that the energy will be maximum energy will be uh, derived out of food uh, if you take atmam food only if you take more food that will be converted into kapham if you take less food that will be converted into pittam so you should neither allow this your life force to switch on to kapham or pittam more food more kapham and more less diet more pittam so you should not allow this your life force to deviate into these states like that if you sleep more you will go to kapham if you uh, don't sleep much uh, you will go to uh, pittam so these two two states they are uh, extreme states they are very dangerous for a yogi so if you 
Suppose if you uh, uh, sleep more year or so, most of the people in the world they are very fond of getting sleep than uh, getting uh, waking up. Uh, nobody knows what is the benefit of getting uh, in wakeful state, but a yogi alone can understand, can experience. But the rest of the people they are more more worried about the amount of sleep. Aham atma gora kesa sava bhuta se stata. Aham aditya majjancha bhuta nam antayevcha. That's why in that way, uh, Sri Krishna Paramatma is going to mention the tenth chapter. Aham atma gora kesa. Oh gora kesa. Gora kesa means who has conquered the sleep. A person who has conquered the sleep means a yogi alone will conquer the sleep. For him only, Guda Kesa, uh, Lord Sri Krishna is mentioning Arjuna. So here, conquering sleep is very very important. How to conquer sleep? Not just by waking up. When you take food, optimum food, and you take optimum sleep, then only your uh, diet and uh, you, if you do yoga optimally, uh, that food will be converted into maximum amount of energy. Uh, that energy will be turned into sukram, sukram into uh, that is called rathas, rathas to ojas, ojas to tejas. So the food, maximum food conversion is very important for a yogi, for that he has to uh, take optimum diet and optimum sleep also. If you sleep, here sleep is also uh, uh, totally misunderstood by people. Sleep is not to forget yourself. This is only a period during which you will have to give rest to the other parts of the body, including your brain. So brain and the other parts, the especially the sensory organs, whether they are uh, uh, organs of uh, motion or organs of uh, knowledge, the Jnanendriyas and Karmendriyas, uh, they should be given rest so that uh, the during sleep the food you have taken in the night that will be converted into energy that will be kept reserved for the process of doing yoga in next day in the morning but if you go on getting up and uh, stay for uh, hours together in the daytime wakeful stay that will be exhausted and there won't be energy left behind for uh, doing action in the next day morning or in the next day so you have to uh, reserve that energy by taking, uh, giving rest to the organs. So that's why sleep is necessary. Sleep means now if you go on sleeping more uh, for hours together, your uh, body will uh, go to uh, inertia state. You will go to tamasic state, uh, and that uh, the brain will become dull. And in the next day, your food also will never be digested properly. If you t uh, take sleep more your food will be less digested. So more sleep, less digested and less sleep, digestion will be there, but that will be another that energy will be converted to pitta. So in the both ways uh, you will be disturbed. So Nachasthastu yogosthu nachaikata manasraha nachati swapna selasya jagrato naiva charjana. Yogo bhav suk yukta har viharasi yukta chestasa karmaso. Even a yogi should have optimum exertion and optimum recreation, and he should neither sit idle or uh, should not be exhausted too much by exerting his body. But optimum exertion and optimum uh, recreation must be there for a yogi. Yogi bhavati dukkaha. Then only he will uh, get rid of this uh, dukkaha means sorrow. What sorrow? that sorrow of getting life and death cycle. So he will get rid of this life and death circle if you observe, if he observes this uh, uh, diet and uh, sleep precautions, uh, he will, he can do this yoga to the maximum possible extent only. So these are, the, these things are very much necessary for a yogi. Afterwards, Yada vinitam chittam atman yevava tishtati nisprash saroka bebhyo yukta ichuchate tada. Here also, when he is going on observing uh, this, uh, doing yogam and observing this uh, diet principles, yada vinitim chittam, when this his mind is uh, 
totally under his control atmanyevava tishthati and when he is uh, his mind is totally merged in the atman nispra sarva kamye bhyo that means he will uh, be never bothered about these desires so he will be abandoning all these desires from outside and yukta ichchute tada he is called then only he will be called as yukta that means yogi so the entire chapter is uh, describing about uh, this yoga only yadadi po nevatastu nengate yoga yoga ma sopamasmata yogano yatachittasya injate yoga matmanaha just like the flame when it becomes still in a windless state like that the yogi will become still he will mind will become still when he is going on uh, taking it upward his mind becomes still uh, when it becomes still mind you that flame will be uh, its intensity of light will be more maximum if a flame flickers the intensity of light will be lessened when the light is lessened naturally there will be every chance of misunderstanding that is called vaparit jnanam reverse knowledge thereby saying the uh, the rope as a snake due to less light the, you will see the rope as a snake the uh, uh, the pole as a human being and the uh, ears of the uh, what you call rabbit is a uh, uh, its horns sesame sharanyam like that uh, there is every chance of misunderstanding like that uh, due to less sufficient light only we are uh, seeing this brahman as world this brahman as world because of this less light if you make your mind still by controlling your life force by doing pranayama there will be intensity of light more thereby you will be seeing brahman as brahman you will see brahman inside and you will see brahman outside also yada parate yatra parabhate chittam nirdham yoga sevaya yatra chayi atma atmano pasyan atmane tushtati he is mentioning that state where the yogi is experiencing yatra uparamate chittam nirdham yoga sevaya by doing yogam where he is uh, attaining that state that is yatra uparamate chittam when the mind is withdrawn from outside uh, yatra up, atmanyeva pasyata atmane tushtati he will see the atman inside and how he will inside uh, enjoyed inside like this sukham aachantikam yattad buddhigrahi matindram veti yatra nachayavaya ayam sitas chalati tatvatah the eternal bliss the state of eternal bliss will be experienced by a, a instrument that is buddhigrahi matindram